We have work to do, we have work to do, but I don't really consider this work at all. This is something I could do 12, 14 hours a day and still have enough gas left in the tank to address more orchids. This is how I'm going to be potting up my beautiful gems from Fernanda Nascimento Orchids and Succulents that I recently received. And because of what she's done pre-sending them to me, they are actually just ready to go into pots. But I do want to explain my reasoning behind what I'm doing because you will be seeing something like this. What on earth is that for? <laughs> I will show you a little bit later on in the video. And you will be seeing something like this, which we will be doing with another orchid. Yeah, let's get into it. There is work to be done. What I'm going to do is start with the easiest and the most obvious. This is Bratonia Shelob Tolkien. Fantastic root system, ready to go. What I'm doing here is bumping it up straight away into an 18 centimeter pot. It's a bit larger than what the orchid would look like more, let's say, feasible in a 15 centimeter pot. But I don't want to be doing this again next year. This orchid is vigorous. I've already cut off some of the dead roots in the back. 18 centimeter pot, leave it alone for as long as possible. That's what I'm going to do with the Bratonia and it's going to have a lot of small lecker. My Potinara here, <laughs> what I didn't show you because I didn't see it because my mind was exploding. I have a little sheath here. I don't know if it wants to do anything about that, but this Potinara is also used to lacquer. I have not cut any of the dead roots off. I want to use them as anchoring. That's going to go into a 15 centimeter pot with small lacquer as well. So that's pretty simple and straightforward. We'll deal with that. And then it starts to get a little bit more complicated. We'll deal with the Kingianum as well small Lekka 15 centimeter pot. We will also deal with Dendrobium nobili over there. That's going to be a bit different. And then I have the Paphiopedalum, also something I will be dealing with. But first of all, these are pretty straightforward. I hope I find a beautiful little music track. I'm going to be potting these up and then we'll talk about the others. Before I really get going, I am going to be using a support for the Bratonia. I really don't think I actually need it, but thinking is not knowing. So once she's in the pot, I'm going to use the wire just to support her if she needs it. For future reference, it is in the pot if necessary. I'm also going to do my little submerged potting up method here. Water is already in the pot. When the orchid goes in, the lecker will fill around very, very nicely, fill in the gaps very gently. Super, super important for roots so that they don't get shocked and the vellum doesn't get bruised. My little potinara here doesn't need a support. Did I say I was going to use small lecker for Bratonia? Well, guess what? I have changed my mind. I'm going to be using pumice. So let's see if this actually works, if it has soaked enough so that it will sink. It sinks. Awesome. Let me tell you, the pumice has soaked almost for over six weeks before it used to float. Now it sinks. Fantastic. So the reason I changed my mind to use the pumice is A, because I've got it and I don't see any other orchid coming into my collection that is going to require pumice. And secondly, my Metonia Sunset is doing so, so well. I'm going to repeat it for the Bratonia. little backup support for the back bulb for eventualities if it gets breezy. Off camera I did flush the pot through abundantly and I've left a little bit of space on the surface of the pot so that I can add more pumice if need be. Right now 
Everything that was covered is covered again. I have also filled the pot with fertilized water, 300 parts per million. Seems a little bit of an overkill, but that is what I had on hand. And if the roots can benefit a little bit just to keep maturing that bulb, perfect. So, Bretonia Shiloptolken in the house, pending her tag. If you're new to my channel, FFF stands for Fabulous Friend Fernanda. That is Fernanda Nacimento, orchids and succulents from whence these orchids came. Fabulous friend Fernanda. All right, on to Potanara. No need to flush through the Potinara because my lecker is super clean. The pumice has always exuded a little bit of excess dust while it was even in the storage water. But my lecker on the Potinara here is super clean, no need to flush. At this point in time, no fertilizer in the water, plain RO water, and I potted her up into the middle because these little guys can actually surprise us and chuck out a growth around the back. She has plenty of space in the pot for many, many years to come. Now we move on to something that's a little bit more fiddly, but let's have a look-see at the Dendrobium kingianum. Well, that was a little bit more of an arts and crafts deal. As you saw, probably, hopefully, clearly, I wired all the keikis like a daisy chain together. I used the wire at the end, left it a lot longer, and staked that into my pot. I had one itty bitty keiki I didn't want to compromise by tying the wire around it because this is rather more sturdy than I would like for this little keiki down here. So that is potted up a little bit more loose but somewhat inside, also supported by roots. And for me, this works beautifully. I don't have all the keikis flopping around. They're all steady, sturdy, supported, all wired together, and now they can just grow, mature, and then we'll cross the bridge when the time comes, once they have established proper sized growths, what this orchid is capable of. Then we will address separating them, seeing how they've developed. But for now, secured, wired in a daisy chain, staked into the media. I only have plain RO water at this point in time in this pot. They've had plenty of CalMag in the previous days, just want them to settle down now. Right, let's get on <laughs> with the Nobili. I have thought long and hard about this one. I was going to just straight transition it into Lekka because I've got root tips, but I'm also coming into the winter now. And this one is used to being in bark, wet, dry cycle. It's going to live outside during the winter. I can control the climate of this orchid based on what it already knows. I'm just going to pot it up in bark. And then next year, when the new growth start and new roots start, it will go into like a COC. So for the time being, we're going to just fill up this pot with some bark. Woohoo! Seeing as we have it, yes, there is some kind of horticultural sponge in there. Not a big fan of that, but for the coming six months, I think this is the better option 
than to try and transition it now while it lives outdoors as well. All those variables, nah. We'll take one variable out of the equation and give this one a nice big pot and put some fresh media around it. And if I need to stake it, I will do so at a later stage, but I'm going to do that then off camera for now. I'm just going to get it back into bark. It's been in my Greek Tupperware pots for the past couple of days, just getting cow mag on it, getting some more energy into it. The canes are fully grown, so there's nothing here that I need to do to pump it up and get it to strength. They are super duper canes, perfect in size. So, just like with the hummus, I've got bark, let's use it. At least to make sure that this orchid, when I do transition it, has the right timing, the proper timing. And I'm not going to faff around too much with my air gaps down there. I will be flushing this one almost every day. If need be, I will set it in water and soak it completely, depending on how the ambient air is behaving. And that is, surprise, surprise, curveball. That is the nobly done. And we will address this one definitely when the new growths come and the new roots as well. So we'll give her a good, good soak. I will be pHing at 6.5. <laughs> okay, but it won't be for long. It definitely won't be for long, seeing as it's that time of year now for this orchid. It's gonna be just a couple of weeks of pHing a little bit different, but for me, it is worthwhile. This is a precious gift from Fernanda Nacimento Orchids and Succulents my friend, FFF. Right, now comes the Paphiopedalum and that contraption that I showed you at the beginning of the video. And if you're still here, do you know what? I looked at some footage just before I started with the Kingianums and I realized I was so excited again to get on with the job here of potting these guys up. I can't tell you how sorry I am, but hi. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. <laughs> oh gosh, I'm so sorry. Just too excited to get on with it. <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, right, let's go to Papio Pedalum. And um, yeah, you see what I'm trying to do here? <laughs> this is going to hopefully, hopefully keep the leaves upright. It is a beautiful display. It's a little bit different, very unconventional, I have to admit. However, I thought that instead of having a stake and a flopping around Paphiopedum gratixianum, I wanted to use this what I use for Christmas decorations when I hang this in the windows. I hang Swarovski crystal ornaments out of these branches and I have several of these lying around waiting for Christmas. And I thought this Paphiopedalum would be perfect if it survives. I have the leaves supported. I have all the juices flowing up the cells. I have a lot of flushing to do to maintain that one single root, but the orchid is safe and solid in the pot. I can lift her out of the pot and there is no movement and I can flush and walk around with her. <laughs> okay, if it gets very, very windy, I'll have to be careful, but she's going to go inside anyways. But 
what do you think? What do you think? Let me know. I mean, when this entered into my head, I was going to go, all right, here come the straight jackets. <laughs> I only need one. But I think it not only does it look pretty, I do love my little four white snowy branches, but it supports the orchid and it has the leaves upright instead of being floppy. And we can monitor if, of course, if she makes it the center leaf here because I didn't secure that. Let's get the other ones. Maybe you guys need to settle down. If you've fallen off your chair, get back up, get back onto the chair, the sofa, recliner, whatever you fell off of. <laughs> Let's have a look at all of them now. Ta-da! Orchid potpourri, five ways. Bark. <laughs> Dendrobium nobili, I've got that soaking in some water, seeing as the bark was dry and mine was fresh and needs to be broken in, so to speak. So you got bark, pumice, simple, small lecca, wired in keikis, small lecca, and my beautiful, somewhat peacock display there of my Paphiopedalum gratixianum. Well, what do you think? Y you can be honest. If you think it's all a little bit ridiculous, please let me know in the comments. If I can update in six months and everything is doing really well and growing well, maybe I can change your mind. There is method to my madness. Personally, I am so pleased for my little Paphiopedalum back there. And I, like I said, the only thing I need to do is cultivate that one little root, flush, 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 because quite honestly, it's not the potting up method. It's not the support, so to speak, that would make this orchid fail. It is not getting more roots to grow, but let's keep our fingers crossed. If nothing else, I hope you found this entertaining, something very, very different. But then again, there comes a box into the mail from Portugal. And, you know, we have to think outside of the box, especially with regards to my curveball change of plans on the Nobili. In six to seven months, I hope that we can get that one into Lekka. But yeah, really, really appreciate your opinion good bad indifferent if there were some nuggets in this video that you found very useful let me know in the comments below and if nothing else i hope you had a great time watching and i appreciate your time watching this video thank you so very very much please please stay safe have a beautiful day and take care bye